Okay, next we're gonna check out some of the other media item contexts for working with mouse modifiers in Reaper. One of my favorites is media item bottom half. This creates a whole bunch of new options when we do things with the bottom half of the media item. So let's start off once again with left click. Now by default, everything passes through. So everything we do on the top half or the bottom half is the same. But that's kind of a waste. We could do a whole bunch of new things with the bottom half. Like adding a stretch marker, clicking the top half moves the edit cursor and selects the item. But clicking in the bottom half adds a stretch marker without even holding down a modifier. So we get a whole new range of options just by clicking on the lower half of the media item. Add a whole bunch right here. And it's not just for left click. We have some for drag. So we could change this to move item edges, but not the content. So if we drag over here, it moves like normal. But if we drag down here, it moves the item edges without the content. Or do it the opposite way. Just move the content with a few other options as well, ignoring selection and grouping and a few ripple editing options as well. Let's just choose move though. Again, this works like normal, but doing it down here moves the content inside the item. Again, it's a great time saver because you don't have to use a modifier to do it. Just go to the bottom half. And finally, there's a bunch for double click. By default, it doesn't really do anything. It does the same thing as the top half. But we could choose something like setting the time selection. Or creating an action. And keep in mind with the action list, it could be custom actions as well. But let's just choose item volume. We'll nudge it down 1 dB. And double click in the bottom half, nudges it down 1 dB. While the top half can do something completely different. In this case, we left it on mute. Unmute it, bring it down in volume. And again, there's plenty of modifiers to choose from right here. So it's definitely worth planning out your preferences and using them. You'll work a lot quicker. Let's put this back to our defaults. Now another context is the media item edge. Let's go back to left drag. This is what happens when we click on the edge. By default, it's gonna move the edge. Right over here, when we left drag. But again, we can change that. We could ignore snap by holding down shift. Turn this back on. Normally, it's gonna snap to here or here. But if we hold down shift, it ignores it. We could ignore selection or grouping. We could stretch the item by holding down option or alt on the PC. And that stretches it. And a few other stretch options. We could choose double click, which has no actions assigned to it, which is a great spot to add one. Go to the action list. We could type in volume and choose reset items volume. And now we could adjust this volume right here and reset it by double clicking right at the edge. Pops right back. It's a nice time saver and it works on both sides over here as well. But we can assign any action to it. So be creative with it. Now we also can adjust the media item fade and auto crossfade right over here. Let's choose left click. This decides what happens when we're adjusting the fade right over here. Let's create a fade. Now by default, there's no action when we click it, but we can change that to delete the crossfade. Just click it and it goes away. 
or we could set it to the next shape. Just click it and it goes through each shape. But that's just for left click. We also have left drag, which is going to move the fade by default by doing this. Ignore snap by holding down shift or a bunch of other options like right here. Or we could adjust the curve right here by dragging. It changes the curve, but it doesn't change the size. And we also have double click. Right now it opens the crossfade editor, but we can have it do anything. Go to our actions, choose mute, and we can toggle mute it just by going here and double clicking. Mutes it, unmutes it. So there's so many different places to choose from where you want to click and have different things happen. Besides auto crossfade, we have fade into section, which has left click, left drag, and double click as well. And the intersection is basically this area right here. What happens if we double click here, or if we drag it, that can all be adjusted right in here. And finally, we have stretch markers. This is what happens when we adjust our stretch markers in the media item. And this one only has left drag. So we can move our stretch markers by default. Let's put one in right there, get bigger. If we put a few in, by default, just grabbing right here, adjust them. But again, we can change that. By shift, it'll ignore snap, ignore selection and grouping, can move the contents under the stretch marker, move stretch marker pairs. That one's kind of cool. Moves them in pairs. See these two move. And these two move. Or these two. It makes a lot of sense when you want to keep everything in between the two markers intact. Like this right here. And it adjusts these two together. There's a ton of options to choose from. It all comes down to choosing the ones that are important to you and putting them where you want. But now you know the options and you know where you can put them. So you know it's available to you. So take the time to set up your own mouse modifiers and you'll be surprised at how much quicker you're working. So anyway, that's the media item mouse modifiers. In the next video, we're gonna check out the track mouse modifiers. Let's go. Thank mm -hmm. you.